Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again for another episode of Home Built Happiness. If this is your first time coming to the channel, please consider giving us a like and a subscribe. Do all the things so you can get notified of further episodes. One day, it might help us get a nickel or two from YouTube. Possibly. Got something nice in store for you today. We have got a Bestech 500 watt pure sine wave inverter here. We're going to unbox it, we're going to test it out, and we're going to see if it uh, stands up to what it says it's going to stand up to, how much heat it's going to generate, and we can look at a couple things. All right, all right, here we go, and this item is purchased off of Amazon. If you're interested in one yourself, I'll put a link up in the description for it. Uh, this came in a box inside of a box, so it was packaged pretty well. I don't have any complaints about that. Here we go. And they don't want you to get into this thing. All right, we've got some information here. It looks like uh, addresses and contact information. All right, here, let me flip this around towards you. All right, here we go. All right. So it looks like we get a instruction manual. Pretty simple, it's just a couple pages. We're going to get a car adapter. And this looks like it's just like 12 gauge wire. It might be 10 gauge, but it looks like just 12 gauge. I'll correct that if I'm wrong on the screen. We've got some alligator clamps here. Okay. We got two fuses. Some of these items will come with fuses, but they're not user, uh, user changeable. It looks like this model is. So that is really cool. Looks like we have two uh, AC plugs. We just have a simple switch for on off. We have two USB. Looks like it's up to 2.4 amps. One thing that I can tell you really off the bat that I like about this is that, I don't know if you can see this, but the mounting surface, these tabs actually stick up a little bit. So even if you don't use any kind of spacer or washer, you automatically get some airflow underneath here. That's nice, that's something that I appreciate about these. You don't get that in, in a lot of inverters. Looks like these are the female ends, and then you just have your your terminal right there. You don't have a divider right here, but honestly, some people complain a lot about that. I don't because I use a lot of heat shrink and I make sure that everything's shielded. I've never had terminals like this touch. So it's not a problem for me. You got two, um, fuse holders here that are user accessible, which is nice. Ugh. There we go, 40 amp. These things are a little bit of a bear to get off. You know they're not gonna fall off while you're using it, so that's, that's good, I can appreciate that. And then we have no, no LED display. Uh, nothing. We, we have a light right here. So if we're going to test it, we're going to have to put a shun on it, which is okay for me. If it's a good quality, I don't, I don't really need all of that. <clears throat> Folks, I am excited to test this guy. Let's see what we can mock up here. So here we go. Here is our test rig. And these always look a little backwoods, and I, I apologize for not making them look prettier. Um, but this is temporary, and this is what we're going to do for now. So I've got our, our lithium iron phosphate battery. I've got a shunt hooked up to it. We're at 14.16 volts right now. The power draw that you're seeing there, the 8.9 watts, or the 0.63 amps, 
is this unit in the power on position? I've got a power meter that's hooked to it. I'm gonna be looking at watts on the outbound and I'm gonna be looking at draw on the inbound side. I'm also going to be tracking the power factor. And we've also got this power strip that we're going to be connecting to it. Our load is going to be this air conditioner. I can get in there underneath the 500 watt mark. We'll see what we can do. Let's get her set up. All right, so with our unit plugged in, it looks like we are pulling 0 0.6 watts. We're still at 9.4 watts on this unit. Let's go ahead and start our load. We're gonna kick it on, cool, and I'm gonna bring it up to 79 because I know it's I know it's below that. go we're ramping up we're 511 and we're currently pulling 650 through the shunt Outbound, we're pulling 557, 560. It is not even warm, and we just exceeded by almost 100, 100 watts, and it's 78 degrees. The case is 78, and we've... We're 70, 78, 79 degrees, and we just ran at almost 80 watts past max capacity. Power with the fan operating is 12.6 watts. And we're also pulling four by four, or 4.4 off of the air conditioner. All right, so we are set up. I hope that you can see both screens. Looks like we're running on fan high on the air conditioner. Currently pulling 117 volts, 60 hertz. We got a 0.68 power factor. And we're pulling 0.8 amps right now. Draw on the DC side is 78 uh, watts. Okay, we're ramping up. Let's look at our power factor. 0.72. Okay, we're over 500. All right, so we're pulling 481 watts. 117. 0.4, 60 hertz under load. At 486 watts. Our DC is 579.3.
All right, so right now we're running exactly 491 watts at a 0 0.80 power factor to this unit. Draw on the DC side is 569.5 watts. Now, if you've seen my review on this inverter right here, you'll see that it got very, very hot. When I was at max load, we were pulling overheat protection and this lug up here was actually getting as hot as 200 degrees. Now let's look at this unit. Because mind you, we are at max stated load. We're at 84, 86, 88, 83. The wires are hot, guys. The wires are probably the hottest thing we have going on here. And there are 104. I'm trying to see if I can get them any hotter, if I can get the reading. No, 104, like that's it. Let's look at these clamps. 103 is as high as I can get these clamps. We're at 412, 411. Let's go ahead and see if we can ramp this back up again. See how high we can get it. I don't want to send it into overload and it looks like we got overload on the AC at 571 because it shut off. I mean, what, what should we do? Should we just, let's just full send, right? This thing is not hot at all, you guys. I mean, the wires are hot, which is expected under the load. I always like to test these things with the wires that come with them. I think that's fair to you all. I've got some other wires I'm going to be using on these, some 8 gauge that I'm going to put on. And let's look at our, our other information here. We've been testing for 22 minutes, almost 23 minutes. 117 volts right now, 60 hertz. 0.79 power factor. 571 is the highest we have gone. We're currently at 512. Like mind you folks, we are over 500 watts right now. And this is on an inverter that is rated at peak 500. Our power being pulled from the battery is 631.3 watts. Gives you a little idea about efficiency of this unit. And like I said, I'm I'm just I'm so surprised. Like look at the exhaust coming out. Like I'm really satisfied with that, I'm not gonna lie, because we are over maximum output right now. Like, we are sitting over the 500 mark. I'll flip it back right before, right before it cuts off. When I see it ramp up, I'll take us over and look at, uh... We'll look at the voltage. There we go. Okay, so it looks like the air conditioner went ahead and cut off. The highest we got was 571.8. All right, as you see, it's a variable stage fan. It's went ahead and cut down at this point. All right, so before I cut this unit off, I just want to go one last time. I want to make sure that nobody thinks that I'm doing anything nefarious here. We're not sponsored by these guys. Like we're 90, 88, the exhaust we're putting out what in the 90s. Now our wires on the other hand are probably going to be 
they're not even over a hundred anymore. I cannot get this thing to hit 100 degrees at all. All right, so friends, what can I say about the Best Tech 500 watt pure sine wave inverter? I've got nothing at all bad to say about this unit. Um, I own four different inverters ranging from 100 watts up to 2500 watts, both a modified sine wave and pure sine wave. This runs the coolest at full load or even three quarter load, it runs cooler than every single other inverter I own. It, in my opinion, is well over engineered. It just says 500 watts in the instructions and it does not give any other numbers. The highest we tested it at was 571.8 watts and that was not overheat protection, that was not overload protection, that was the air conditioning unit we were using as our load that actually cut off. I'm sure that the current being supplied, there was probably an issue with that and that's why the air conditioner shut itself off as a means of self-protection. But let me also add that the 571.8 watts was being carried through this unit at a 0.79 power factor, which means that the apparent power this was having to take was probably, what, 20% higher? five stars five stars i'm gonna put a link to this in the description you can get this exact unit through that link um I'm, I'm satisfied five stars guys like seriously five stars i'm very happy with it i wish i would have bought a 1200 watt version of this to actually go up there i would absolutely recommend it I don't like the fact that it does not have a shunt or any way to monitor current. I also don't like these wires that come with it. Yeah, so the wires that come with this are 12 gauge. Um, at a bare minimum, I would use the wires on the shunt that I'm using are um, 10 gauge. Those didn't seem to heat up. I've actually got some 8 gauge that I'm going to use with this unit. It's going into our tow vehicle. That's my only complaint. I would, if you're going to run this anything over half of its rated capacity I would definitely replace these but seriously the bottom line is we were operating a 9500 BTU window unit off of this inverter and it wasn't even getting hot to, to me that's a win-win guys so check the link in the description if you have any questions in regards to this unit let me know I'm more than happy to answer them I really appreciate all of you that check this content out, whether you're subscribed, whether this is your first time, or you just come in here and check these videos out. If you like the content and you haven't already, click the uh, subscribe button, also enable the notifications. You'll see whenever something fun happens in our life and we end up with something like this, we're going to make some content and get it out to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next show. Bye. I'm gonna bet that there's a button right there that says subscribe. There's probably one there with our most recent upload. Probably one right there that's got a playlist in it. Go ahead and click on it. It's fun. You're gonna